Now. Now. All right, I think I'm gonna try to do these ones, which I'm a little scared to do because I actually have to lift them out of here and fill the bottom up with dye and then put them back in. So, <laughs> they fit pretty snugly in here, so I'm hoping I can get them right back in the way they came. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to put some paper towels down because there may be dye on this table. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to coat the bottom with the dark blue. I think I want to do the dark blue. Yeah, we got cerulean, forest green. Okay, so I want to do the dark blue on the bottom and primarily the greens on the top. It should give me some good contrast. It's not too much. I'm going to have to work pretty quickly because this is going to soak up through the bottom and I want to soak through the whole shirt. So what I'm going to do is prep my greens and just get them ready so I don't have to fight with them once I get the shirts in there. Don't like how my table is uneven and all the dye is soaking to that other side. Mm. Trying to make it to where this is even in there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but all the dye is kind of going that way because I don't know, my table's uneven or can't think about what I want to do here. Okay. So for that reason, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in there opposite the way I took them out. So in just like so. Okay, now let's go with forest green. Whoop, that was a little more green than I wanted on my spiral. Oh well. We're just having some fun, aren't we? Okay, so that's a forest green. I really like that forest green and I really like the lime green also so I'm going to focus my energy on that I might not get the regular green in here. Maybe I'll do it over the lime green. So once the lime green takes up the space in the shirt, the other green won't have a whole lot of places to go. This is maybe the messiest, sloppiest tie-dye I've ever done. <laughs> it's kind of fun though, not having to be all precise.
Yeah, I think I am going to go back in with the regular green over the top of the lime green. Um, at least on this bottom one. I think it could use it. Yeah, I see. I like that. Okay. This is like muck dyeing without waiting for the ice to melt. Okay, so I didn't get through as much of that dye as I wanted, but that's okay. I do kind of want that poked down in there more. You guys are listening to me talk to myself. See, this is why I don't do voice on my videos, because, yeah, I don't know. I'm used to it. You guys are probably like, God, lady, shut up. So I didn't get through my forest green or my green green, so I'm a little disappointed about that. But I don't want to add any more dye into that one. I think it's good. Um, I mean, if I have to dump out a couple bottles, I guess that's okay. Didn't even use the cerulean. Okay, that one's done. Okay, we're on the last one, and similar to what we did before, I am going to be filling the bottom of this up probably with blues, and then doing the red fuchsia and bubblegum over the top. So again, I have to pull these out of here. a big container but these guys are long so I needed a long container it's gonna take quite a bit of dye to fill up the bottom that's okay though so this is a seashell this is a full bottle like I didn't use any of this Ugh. I mixed all this up um, I had this huge dye session in mind that I was going to do and I didn't get around to doing it. And then September was like a crazy month between oh, just some family stuff that happened. And then um, my dog got really sick. And um, so I spent the whole month just with her surgery and her recovery and stuff. And I just didn't get around to dying. I mean, I had the dye sitting around a little while already when September hit. And then September hit and it was just go, go, go through the whole month. So. I just didn't get anything done. Excuses, excuses, right? This is like throwing money away. Hopefully these shirts come out somewhat. And then it won't be a total waste. I'm just shaking up my guys. I'm Sure you guys can hear it. Okay, so I'm also going to try to get these open because I don't want to struggle with them when I'm trying to hurry and get dye on the shirt. Seashell, cheap violet, and marine. And I may just do a mixture of those three blues down in here. I don't know. Definitely need to use the seashell because it is full.
That's crazy. I don't know if you guys can see that. It looks like an oil slick. <laughs> okay, seashell bottle is empty. Um, yeah, let's throw some marine in there too. Hoping that's not too deep. I'm not going to get through all of my dye that I wanted to on this one either. That's okay. Okay. Move these out of the way. And then I have the fuchsia and the bubble gum at least ready. I think I'll start with the fuchsia. Go ahead and get the lid off of that because I definitely want to get some purples in here. So, okay, hopefully it's not too deep. Oh, it's really taking up the dye. Okay, okay, gotta move fast. Going with the bubble gum. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that bubble gum's like hot pink, buddy. Bubble gum is empty. I do need to push this down into the dye a little bit. And gosh, I don't know if I really want to mess with that too much. It's really pretty. No, I think I'm just going to leave that like that. Okay, well, so I didn't get through any of the red. Dang it. I only got through half a bottle of the fuchsia. Dang it. I didn't get through any of the cheap violet. Dang it. I don't really need it. I'm going to have some cool purples in there anyway. And still half a bottle of marine. Okay, well, I don't know if I'm going to dump these or not. I may fold up another shirt or two and see if we can get the rest of these used up. But for the time being, we are done. Dye has been placed on everything that we folded up. Um, I did get through a lot of the dye, just not all of it. And I'm not real hopeful about my brown and orange toned tub because I'm looking at it right now and it's really mucky. So... Um, who knows? Maybe it'll be dark and then we'll do something else to it. We'll bleach dye it or we'll, I don't know, we'll try to save it. Always try to save a fail. But it's not a fail yet, so we'll just have to see. Okay, guys, that's, uh, using old dye 101, I guess. Um, since the dye is so old and it's fall and, um, it's getting colder, and I don't have like my heating tent or anything set up. I'm probably going to leave these set for two or three days before I wash them out. So yeah, I guess we'll, uh, we'll come back then and we'll get them washed out and we'll see what we got. Happy hippie Christmas, everyone. It's reveal time. Um, I just got these shirts washed out. Uh, I did leave them sit for two full days before washing them out. So I'm going to um, pull them up one by one and we're just going to kind of talk about them and see see what happened. Um, I'm going to go with the pinks and blues, the pink and blue set that we did 
first. So here's the first shirt. This one was the, um, just the simple crumple, no rhyme or reason, just a, just, just kind of crumpled it up. And we did tie this one with sinew, so it was a, a tighter, uh, a tighter fold. Um, you can see some really crisp, um, kind of crumples in here. We did get some nice pinks in here. Um, I knew there was going to be, you know, quite a bit of purple in this shirt because I put blue on the bottom and then the fuchsia and the bubble gum over the top. Um, I have to say that it did not come out as pastel as I thought it was going to. Um, I do think it's a little bit lighter than it probably would have been had I used fresh dye. But overall, that's, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty vibrant shirt. Um, yeah, and it, and it came out super cool. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that first one. Uh, let's look at the second one. The second one I did, remember, um, I did the, we folded it in half and we were looking for some symmetrical designs and maybe some faces and some totems in it. And uh, it did not disappoint. We definitely got some cool shapes in here. So this one was folded in half. You can definitely see some symmetry happening here. Uh, right down the middle. So everything that happens on this side happens on this side. And I don't know if you guys can see, but there is kind of a, I don't know, like a little penguin face or something going on here. Um, maybe a little lion face or something. I don't know how well you guys can see that. There we go. So yeah, definitely some, some kind of cool little faces in there. And kind of a totem structure, which I was totally going for. And again, in this shirt, we can see some some nice pinks in this in this top part and of course some really nice purples from from the mixing so uh, yeah those are the first two that's the the pink and blue set and um, I'm pretty happy with those ones the back is going to be pretty much the same you know because we did fold it directly in half okay so let's move on to the green and blue set. This next shirt, this was a, another simple crumple die. And this is the one that I tied with the Rex lace or I don't, I don't know. It's the elastic kind of bracelet band stuff. And so as you can see in this one, the it's there's not as defined of lines because it wasn't tied so tight. The fold wasn't as tight, which allowed more of the dye to kind of seep in and blend. Um, I'm really happy with this shirt. When I first saw it, I was a little concerned about this big light green, lime green area here. Um, but if you look on the side, we have some more of that color here to complement that. So I think all in all, the shirt's really balanced. And I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy, pretty happy with that one. Um, and there's the back. So a lot of, a lot of really cool shades of blues and greens in here. And again, with this shirt, um, I mean, it's, it's not pastel. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm super impressed with how vibrant my dyes were after, um, being mixed for such a long time. I was trying to, I was trying to remember exactly how old they were. And I think I mixed them, um, it was like the beginning of August, I think, it may have been the end of July even, but I think it was the beginning of August, and so today is October 20th, so, I mean, that's a good two and a half months. Um, so, I yeah, I mean, I will say that I feel like some of my colors, like my lime green when I first mixed that. Um, and that is a color I mix myself, just mixing green and yellow. But when I first mix that, I do feel like it's a little bit more punchy. Um, so I do think some fading happened, but I was definitely expecting more pastel results. And that's not really what I got. So, um, I don't know how I feel about that, right? Because I just kind of dumped a bunch of dye on these shirts because I wanted to, like, get rid of it because it was old dye. And now looking at these results, I'm like... I could have probably done some more precise work <laughs> with the colors that I had because I'm definitely not disappointed with these colors. So, all right, that was the first one. Um, I wanted to compare these 
quickly. So this is the one that was tied loosely with the Rex lace. And this is the one that was tied with the sinew. So you guys can see, actually, that's the uh, symmetrical one. Let me pull up this other one. So you can, you can see the difference in the crispness of the lines here. So when you tie them tighter with like sinew, you're going to get more of that, these crisp kind of jagged like edges. Whereas here, we still get some of that, but it's just not as defined. So this is a looser tie. This is a tighter tie. Okay, and then the third shirt will be the um, second blue and green shirt. And if you guys remember, that was the spiral that I just kind of tied the heck out of. Like I tied it really tight with sinew. And I was pleasantly surprised with how that came out. Um, first of all, I don't think it really affected my spiral a whole lot. I'm like, that's a spiral. Like, I really thought it was just going to be a little bit more wonky than it is. Um, and I believe that these lines here are where I tied that sinew super tight. And I think it adds something really cool to the design. So, um, I'm just going to add that to my tie-dye toolbox and I'll probably use that quite a bit moving forward because I really like this effect. Right? You get you get like the best of both worlds. You get your spiral and you get your sinew lines. So, um, and maybe some of you guys out there, you've done that before. I've never done that. So I was like, whoa, that's really cool. So yeah, I'll definitely do that. And again, with this shirt, the colors are fabulous. I mean, not that it wouldn't have been fabulous if they came out pastel, which is kind of what I was expecting. But um, yeah, no, that's, this is not a pastel shirt. <laughs> so I'm super impressed with my, with my dye and how it how well it held up over such a long period of time. Um, the only thing I can think with my dyes, I know that it makes a difference. Some people like mix their dyes with chemical water or with distilled water. I don't do any of that. I use water out of my tap, but I do live in a place that is pretty known for its water quality. Um, we get the little spikes on our ice cubes and our ice cube trays, the little stalagmite looking spikes. Um, and generally that doesn't happen without a pretty purified water. So, you know, maybe it's the quality of my water that's keeping the dyes so vibrant for such a long time. Um, I'm not really sure, but I'm super stoked about it. I like, I just bought a mini fridge for my studio, um, to keep my dyes in and I'm like, maybe I didn't really need to do that. But now I'm curious, how long will my dyes keep in the fridge with this quality of water or whatever is keeping the the color is so vibrant. So yeah, I'm super impressed. That was the second blue and green of the blue and green set. And now we're going to talk about the shirts that I had um, tried to remove color from without white bright. And those shirts were complete and total fails in my opinion in, in the beginning. Um, and that's why I removed the color from them. And I didn't have a lot of hope, right? I was just kind of dumping colors in there and I mixed a lot of colors. And when I was watching um, these shirts batch, the tub just looked like mud. And I thought, uh oh, this is going to be awful, right? I'm like, I'm going to have to bleach these shirts or something. But you guys, <laughs> I have to tell you like how awesome these shirts came out. Um, I, I couldn't be happier. So let me just show you. This is the first one. Um, look how pretty that is. I, it's kind of like a... I don't know, like a camo effect. Um, but I just love, I'm so happy I threw that raven in there. Now I do think the raven lost some, some potency because I'm not getting any really deep blacks here, but I'm getting this really cool purpley iridescent blue color. I don't really know how, how to describe that. It's just kind of lit up. I just think that's so cool. So I hope this shows up on camera. I hope you guys can see just what a super cool color that is. So, um, I mean, this shirt, this is a save. <laughs> I couldn't be happier because that was a throwaway shirt. And now I'm like, I love this shirt. This shirt would be great for, you know, adding heat transfer vinyl to or screen printing. Um, I just, I mean, look at the variation of colors in here. It's just so pretty. I hope you guys think so too. I am super impressed with that, with this, this 
kind of color palette things we got going on here. So that's the first one. Um, that's a win. <laughs> and then this is the second one, and I am in love with this shirt. I mean, look at that. Look how pretty this is. So this was the shirt that had a butterfly outline on it and I had tried to remove the color and you know I know you guys couldn't see it really well in the video but you could definitely see there was like still quite a bit of color in the shirt um and I just I couldn't be happier look how pretty that is look at this color it's just like lit up right I hope you guys can I hope this comes through on camera because it is just stunning really I'll take a look at that I mean, just look at this, look at this blue in here. How pretty is that? I just, I don't think I could recreate this if I, if I wanted to, it is so pretty. So I was all worried it was gonna be a fail and I caught myself, I'm like, it's not a fail yet. You guys, it's not a fail. Like, oh my gosh, these are my favorite ones of the whole bunch. How pretty, stunning. So, you know, I mean, sometimes experimenting just like pays off. I will definitely try to recreate this, but I just, I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know. I'm not really sure how, how this happened, but I'm so happy about it. Um, even the, I was, I was super impressed with like how the marigold came out and just how all the colors blended together. I was I was kind of worried because Raven, Raven lends itself like when it bleeds out to kind of a bluish or purplish kind of outline. And I, I was worried about it after I placed the dye on the shirts because there was already kind of an orange undertone in the shirt. And I thought, you know, orange and purple, <laughs> maybe not such a good idea, but I just, um, yeah, I don't even have words. Wow. You know? Just, just wow. So this is my favorite one. This is my favorite one of the bunch. I'm stoked. I'm stoked about this shirt. Um, so yeah, this was the last, the last shirt of the batch I did. Um, so much fun experimenting. I love not having to have so much control when you're tie-dyeing and just kind of dumping and sloshing and there's just this freedom in that and this just kind of creative expression you know you're just like I'm gonna dump some of this here and dump some of this here and it's not so precise and planned and mathematical I enjoy doing those tie-dyes also but I find that the harder I try to make something perfect the less perfect it comes out and then a lot of times like if I'm not trying at all for anything perfect I get just a masterpiece <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'll definitely be playing around some more. Um, I have a couple of, I have a couple of orders I have to, I have to work on, but, um, I have some other shirts that were kind of fails and, uh, I definitely want to play around some more with, um, you know, low, low water immersion and just kind of feeling my way through, through the process. Like I said, it's a beautiful thing when you just kind of let the universe, like, tell you what the shirt's going to be. I mean, this is, this is what you get. So, um, I really, really hope this shows up as beautifully on camera as, as it is, because these colors are so pretty. I am just stoked. And that blue color is just like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like lit up. Okay, guys. Well, that's how that went. I am, I'm super stoked, super impressed. Um, super impressed with my old dye. I, I definitely was not expecting such vibrant results, but you know, I mean, sometimes life surprises you, I guess. Okay guys, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you guys could tolerate me talking through everything. Like I said, I don't normally talk on my videos because I have a tendency to ramble. That's probably pretty annoying. 
Um, but I'll probably do a couple more videos where I'm talking and stuff, and I still like to do my videos with music, um, just because that allows me to just kind of get into the groove and, and work and not really have to think about what I'm going to say and stuff like that. But uh, if I annoyed the heck out of you, I apologize. I'm sorry, but I hope you enjoyed the process anyway, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.